Up, what up is today Nick. In this video, I'm going to be telling you a truthful guide on intermittent fasting and if it's good or if it's actually bad for you. So, a lot of people will tell you, yeah, intermittent fasting, this is the big deal, the best diet, and another person will tell you you'll lose a lot of muscle mass. So, let's reveal this here. So, there's a lot of different intermittent fasting approaches, alternative fasting, etc. But let's just refer to the most common one on YouTube, which we all know is the 16 8 protocol, which basically means 16 hours fasting, 8 hour eating window or time frame, whichever you want to call it. So one popular belief is that extended periods of fasting will cause muscle damage or even muscle loss. Okay, some people believe that you need to spread your protein throughout the day, have meals every two to three hours of broccoli, rice and chicken. And all of this just in order to maintain muscle optimally. So there have been a lot of studies done and yes, you'll find some studies again intermittent fasting and some studies for intermittent fasting right so which ones should you choose and i'm going to sum this up all for you not just hand picking one study like most people do but summing it up almost like a meta analysis but obviously not exactly live so through all of the studies intermittent fasting did actually not result in a greater muscle loss at all however that said intermittent fasting i probably don't recommend you do this when you're bulking so just keep this in mind However, this is where we're dieting, so let's just stick to the topic. So talk about meal frequency, there might actually be an extended period of time where your feeding window might be too small, meaning let's say one meal a day, right? So that's maybe when you're gonna experience some hunger issues. And plus it will not be sustainable and adherence, as we all know, is the key, the most important point. Okay, so protein feeding frequency. So do you need to have some boring ass chicken breast throughout the day or not, do you need to have it every two to three hours? Let me tell you right now. So you will most likely maintain your fat-free mass with low protein feeding frequencies. And yes, fat-free mass is not necessarily just muscle, obviously glycogen, water, all, all those other good things. However, that said, it most probably is muscle. So in one of the studies where they compared uh, intermittent fasting group compared to a quote-unquote normal diet group, the intermittent fasting group actually sustained the one rep max, the lean muscle mass and the muscle size exactly the same compared to the normal diet group. And also the intermittent fasting group that actually lose some, just a little bit more fat mass. However, that could be due to a, like the calorie intake was self reported So there could be a misjudgment there. So let's not focus too much on the magical approach of intermittent fasting that some, some will see with burn more fat because this, this isn't the case. That said though, like I always say, adherence is very important. And when it comes to intermittent fasting, as you may know, a lot of people respond to it very well and a lot of people just don't respond to it at all. So let me conclude here about intermittent fasting and give you the honest approach, not including a confirmation bias of me trying to find anything that supports intermittent fasting just because I do it. Like a lot of people on YouTube do. So this is coming from a humble point of view, giving the real shit. So let me conclude it right here. Bottom line, let's draw the line. So intermittent fasting did not appear to lose more muscle loss or fat-free mass compared to the regular eating patterns that most people will recommend to you. And like I said, these studies actually did show a great amount of fat mass that was lost so that's obviously just being fat however like i said it was self-reported intakes again coming from a humble point of view this is probably like a, a limitation of the study so i won't keep this uh, accountable basically saying that intermittent fasting doesn't burn more fat than the usual diet as long as you create that bend or end or i don't know what i'm saying calorie deficit as well as this, intermittent fasting does not impair strength or whatever compared to regular eating patterns once again. However, that said, if you do intermittent fasting and you do it for a long period of time and you work out just before you break the fast, it will be very likely and a lot of individuals respond to it this way that they do not have a lot of energy because they don't consume any food throughout the whole day, then they still work out, then they only break their fast. So maybe depending on your schedule, just use the intermittent fasting protocol how you would like it, adapt it to yourself, and that's it. And like I said, if you go too overboard on intermittent fasting, there may just be a little problem if your feeding window is very, very small. Let's say one meal a day, and maybe a four hour or two to four hour feeding window. In my opinion, this is just a bit too absurd. And personally, I think this can actually lead to eating disorders as well. So don't take it overboard. Remember, it's a tool in the toolbox. 
So digressing a little bit, the intermittent fasting, the studies does kind of show that the protein synthesis does fall off a little bit. So it may not be optimal, you know, like I said before in a video to optimize hypertrophy, AKA when bulking. However, more data is needed. So don't take this as a final solution. In my opinion and my personal experience, when I do intermittent fasting, I stay a lot leaner. So I kind of go on, on a lean bulk. However, in most cases, to be honest with you, I do experience greater muscle gain by just doing the regular old bulk without intermittent fasting as a Again, the, the muscle protein synthesis is probably likely to be great. However, end of story, more data is needed. And lastly, again about protein synthesis, when you're doing intermittent fasting, you could actually just ingest slow digesting proteins, in this case, casein, and then the whey protein would be, you know, the fast digesting protein. Now, if you don't have this whey and casein protein powders or whatever, some slow digestion proteins are basically meat, poultry, just all the kind of meats, the good old proteins compared to something like peanut butter. That's, you know, which one's going to be the slow digesting protein, right? Does it might lead to greater muscle retention. Boom. Okay, so that's it. That's intermittent fasting, the truthful approach coming from a humble standpoint, I guess you could say, because I'm not for it and I'm not against it. All I'll say is it's a tool in a toolbox, just like any other diet. You need to understand that, and I say this in probably most of my fat loss videos, is that there isn't just one best diet, the ketogenic diet. Some people hype about that shit over and over again. And I'm talking from an aesthetic point of view, not just like health related, performance related. I'm talking about all body composition point of view. The best diet is the one that will create a calorie deficit and that one that you can sustain. End of story, draw the baseline quotes day night and <laughs> no but that's it to conclude intermittent fasting does not impair strength muscle cross-sectional area etc etc just do the damn thing if you like it do it if you don't don't worry but like i said probably not optimal for bulking stay positive stay smiling i repeat myself all the time and i'll see you in the next one. Oh, one, one more thing if you haven't clicked this video thank you for the 10,000 10,000 yeah we're gonna hit 10,000 subscribers soon anyway but Thank you for the 1,000 subscribers, hyped about that. Thank you for your support. Let me know if you'd like to make a free workout plan for you, even though I've already got loads of them in the description down below. So click that, leave a comment, I'm out.